Hi, I'm George and I'm here with another double E video. Now, this problem down here, it might look really familiar. I recently did another Elmore delay problem that looks just like this except for that buffer. Now, what does that buffer do? That's exactly what this question is asking us. It wants us to find the Elmore delay at node 6 by using this buffer tree. So, what exactly does the buffer add to our circuit? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. This buffer right here can be redrawn as, we'll go ahead and call this the input side. So, uh, B in for buffer in. There is a parallel capacitance to ground, which I'll call C in. Now, the deal with a buffer is that, so your input goes onto the gate of, of some transistor, but there's, there is, but there isn't, a, an electrical connection between the gate and the source and drain of that transistor. Therefore, we draw this as a break in the circuit. We have some ground, an arbitrary voltage source, a series resistor because we're traveling through the transistors with, with some equivalent resistance in that buffer. So we'll call this RB, and then some parallel capacitance for, for the output of that buffer and finally, we have our B out. Now, I went ahead and redrew a version of this circuit with, with, our, with our buffer schematic added in there so that we can find this Elmore delay. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So, you can see I've got a little box around our buffer and all we have to do is find our Elmore delay from the input right here to node six. Now. Again, I'm I'm just going to go ahead and start and start computing. We know that this is our path of propagation. Therefore, we're going to be crossing R1 this and I didn't write it in there. RB and R6. So, we'll go ahead and start with R1. We write R1 times everything downstream from this node capacitor-wise which is C1 through C5, not C6 because it is, there's an electrical break between the buffer and the rest of the circuit. So, C1, and I'll just write this as C1 through C5, and don't do this on a test. And we also have one other capacitor to consider, Cn that is also now downstream from that resistor. So, that's that expression. We continue along our propagation path. We get to the next half of the buffer. We hit RB. So, plus RB times C out, because it's everything downstream from that node, plus C6. And that's all we have there. We continue down a propagation path. We hit R6 plus R6 times everything downstream from this node, C6. You can factor stuff out if you want to. You can do it the other way using capacitances rather than resistors. I'm not going to cover that. There's plenty of online tutorials teaching you how to do it the other way. You end up with the same equivalent answer. So that is our answer to the Elmore delay for a buffered line for this circuit. You can see that not much has changed. All we've really done is add a new set of resistors and capacitors to the circuit. However, what this does is the buffer helps us to drive a long transmission line. There, there, are, there are equations and expressions that you can do that show when it's useful to have a buffer in a circuit as opposed to just running some kind of long wire. You might need a buffer there to, to decrease your transmission delay. And that's a topic for a totally different, much longer video that we're not going to take care of right now. So, I hope, the, I hope that you found this educational as I did. This is, Elmore Delay is not complicated. People just make it complicated. So, there you go, and good luck.